Hey guys and welcome back to what is another exciting episode of Lost Bits right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore noteworthy unused, scrapped, and hidden content in gaming. So in my previous Lost Bits video on the original Sonic the Hedgehog games, I promised a follow-up for Sonic Mania, which many of you have been asking for. Since the PC version of the game has been released, tons of newly discovered unused content has been found. Even as of the making of this video, more and more unused stuff is being found. I kid you not, on the Cutting Room Floor website I'm refreshing every hour or so, and like three new things are being discovered. Now hopefully I'll be able to cover all of the noteworthy unused stuff in this video, but if there is enough stuff discovered after this video goes up, I might make a mini part 2 as well. Should go without saying, but this video will contain spoilers for those of you that haven't yet had a chance to play this awesome game. And as always guys, really quickly, if at any point you do enjoy the video and would like to support the channel, be sure to slap a like down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. And also let me know what other games you would like to see me make a Lost Bits video on next. And with all that fun stuff out of the way, there is a lot to cover in this video, so let's get right to it. Grab your chili dogs, it's time to find some Lost Bits. Alright, to kick things off, let's have a look at the title screen you first see when you boot up the game. Before it was renamed to Sonic Mania, the game was actually titled Sonic Discovery, and interestingly enough, the original graphics for the early development title screen are left over in the game's files. And a special thanks to Necrorun or Deep Game Research on Twitter for recreating the title screen to see what it may have initially looked like. Interestingly enough, so far only one unused song has been discovered. This song is listed in the game's files as Egg Reverie Pinch Mode, and it was likely to be used in the boss fight in Egg Reverie Zone at some point in development. Here let's have a quick listen. Now let's have a look at the many sprites, graphics, and tiles that were scrapped from the final game, but are still found in the game's files. First up, found amongst other text in one of the files, is the unused text saying Hyper. This was likely going to be used to spell out that you can now play as Hyper Sonic, or maybe even a Hyper version of Tails and Knuckles. As some of you might know, this is the highest level transformation that Sonic has ever reached. Although it seems the feature was canned, it would have been really cool to see it in the final game. I was never really a huge fan of the Blue Sphere special stage, but it was really cool to see it make a return. In the game's files, among the sprites set for all the other objects in the bonus game, there can also be found sprites of the Chaos and Super Emeralds from Sonic 3. As we know in the final game, after completing a bonus stage, you are simply given the Chaos Emerald, but it seems at some point it was intended that the player would end up actually picking it up in the stage. Similarly, although the Super Emeralds are seen inactive and cracked in the Knuckles exclusive Lava Reef Zone boss fight, it is also possible that at some point Knuckles would also have to collect the Super Emeralds from the bonus stage. And speaking of the Super Emeralds, an uncracked animation of the Super Emeralds can be found in the game's files, suggesting that maybe at some point they might have played a larger role in either the boss fight or in the whole game in general. Also for the special stage, there exists a weird unused message stating, Time to Escape. You don't really have to escape the special stage in the final game, so maybe at one point in development the special stage had a completely different objective. Next up are two unused sprite sets left in the game's files from Sonic 1's Scrap Brain Zone and Sonic 2's Hidden Palace Zone. Now it's unclear whether these are just leftovers from the original games or if they were going to be used as placeholders for eventual remakes of the levels to be used in the final game. My guess is that they at one point considered to remake these zones but eventually had to reduce their list to a certain number and these zones were decided not to be included. On that same note, there is another huge sprite set with various other miscellaneous sprites from the mobile ports of Sonic 1, 2, and the failed Sonic 3 port. As you can see, this includes various obstacles, enemies, and more. Now according to Christian Whitehead, one of the game's main developers, apparently a blueprint zone initially existed very early in the game's development. This zone initially contained many of the sprites ported over from the mobile remasters from a few years ago in order to test some of their dev tools, and they said they just simply forgot to delete these sprite sheets in general. If you've played the game already and have gotten to the second level, you probably saw the cool intro animation at the beginning of Chemical Plant Zone where a drop of some weird purple chemical drops on your character's head. You might also have noticed that Tails' animation wasn't nearly as special or interesting as Sonic's or Knuckles, and he pretty much just looks upward. Well, it turns out that a full, scrapped animation can be found in the game's files where Tails reacts to the drop, then proceeds to dry himself off using his tails. And there's actually another cut animation in the game. By editing the RAM for the game, Sonic says, I'm out of here. And then just pieces off screen. Yeah, just like that, causing an instant game over. This is apparently a throwback to Sonic CD and was seen in the pre release demos of this game, but the developers decided to disable it in the final release. 
If you've played Sonic Mania, you'll know that each zone only contains two acts each. Now this is actually only mostly true, as in the game's files, the boss area in Lava Reef Zone, although using Act 2 graphics, is referenced in the game as Act 3. And sprites for an Act 3 title card can also be found in the game's files, meaning that either this boss fight was meant to originally be shown as Act 3, or possibly other zones initially had a third act as well. It appears that there was a boss that was scrapped from Studiopolis Zone in the game as well. This boss looks fairly similar to Gapsule from Sonic and Knuckles. Judging from these sprites here, it seems that the boss fight would employ some sort of rock, paper, scissors mechanic in order to defeat the boss. Also cut from the Studiopolis Zone is some sort of matchmaking roulette game referred to in the code as Love Tester. I'm not entirely sure what it was supposed to do, but it looks like depending on which character you're playing as, if the game landed on Amy, you would win, and if you landed on Dr. Robotnik, you would lose and a broken heart would be displayed. The Press Garden Zone also has quite a few unused objects. First of all, there is this unused bouncing stack of newspapers, as well as these high-speed spinning rollers. Then most notably, there are these scrapped printing machines labeled Sega SP500, which is apparently supposed to be an homage to the classic Sega home console, the SG-1000. Again, not entirely sure how or what these machines would do, but it looks like you would have to fill some sort of jars with either cyan, magenta, or yellow ink, or a combination of the colors for some unknown reason. Next up, in the game's files, you can find the sprite set for the Star Constellations in Stardust Speedway. Among the Sonic, Harp, and Spartan Helmet Constellations, there are two unused constellations of the stereotypical Happy and Sad masks. And as usual, it is unclear why these masks were scrapped, but my only guess is that they look kind of creepy. And the last noteworthy unused sprite is what appears to be a Sega Genesis with a 32X attachment emitting some sort of beam of light. Its original purpose remains a mystery, but this was probably supposed to be just a background aesthetic for some stage that went unused. Okay, now we have one of the most bizarre hidden easter eggs in a game that I have ever seen. I honestly seriously refuse to believe this was real until I tried it out for myself. In Act 1 of Hydro City Zone, by grabbing onto a chain and inputting left, 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 right, 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 up, 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 which is the level select code from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, a ring sound will play and then from that point, whenever a speed booster is used in the zone, a sound clip of ya boy Video Game Donkey will play instead of the normal sound for the remainder of the zone. I still have a really hard time believing that this is a real thing. Another neat thing that was discovered is that if you fiddle around in the game settings initialization on the PC version, you can access a secret developer menu in the game by pressing escape. This menu gives you access to various new things such as a stage select where you can start any level in the game as well as access to play any of the in-game cutscenes or endings. Additionally, after activating this developer menu, when in-game you can also speed up the game by holding backspace which can be really helpful if you want to skip through a cutscene or a level quickly. Alright guys, it's time again to enter debug mode. If you've seen my last Sonic Lost Bits video, you would need no introduction, but if not, don't worry. In short, the debug mode is a feature that has been in numerous 2D Sonic games, which lets you move the game's camera around, in addition to cycling through various sprites which appear in the stage you're playing on, which can then be placed pretty much anywhere you want. Like I said last time, basically turning the game into Sonic Maker. Debug mode also lets us see some things we aren't supposed to normally see, and it also reveals some more unused objects. Now I probably won't find everything, so if you have this game, I highly recommend you try debug mode for yourself, it's a ton of fun, and hey, who knows, maybe you'll find something new yourself. Anyways, let's start off by first exploring Green Hill Zone. The first act of Green Hill Zone is basically a remake of the original from Sonic 1, but in this game's debug mode, we can place many of the objects that didn't quite work in the original, like the giant bonus game rings, these unused spheres, all of the item boxes, and even the original version of Splats the Bunny, who was scrapped in the original game. So by now you might already have a few questions. Why is the ground sometimes red, white, or yellow? What does AL, AH, and BL mean? What about S? From what I've gathered, AL stands for Action Layer, while BL stands for Background Layer. These basically control which layer Sonic will move to. These are typically seen at loops or areas where you fall behind walls throughout the game. Basically, when you move from AL to BL, Sonic will move to the Background Layer and will appear behind the Action Layer of sprites, as seen here. I couldn't find what AH stands for, but my best guess would be Action Hazard, as the AHs are typically seen encircling platforms or ground that crumbles when stepped on. The S circles stand for spin, as they are areas that will automatically change your character into a spin move. These S circles are actually also one of the things that you can scroll through in the debug mode, but they are unable to be placed as far as I know. Instead, when selected, by pressing a button, all of the areas in the game that have collision properties will be shown in either white, red, or yellow. 
Here, yellow means tiles that are solid on just the top, red are tiles that are solid from the bottom and from the sides, and white tiles are solid from each side. This is a really neat little dev tool that pretty much anyone can access and it gives us a little bit of insight into the game's development. But anyways, back to Green Hill Zone. Seems like the developers this time paid much more attention to detail than the original Sonic team, as now I wasn't able to find any floating spikes like I did in Sonic 1. Another weird thing that I noticed is that since Green Hill Zone has two different background images depending on whether you're in the above ground or underground segment, if you move the camera up or down where you normally don't go, the background image won't change. This results in the cave-like background up top or the above ground scenery underground. Sometimes the game will realize this error and instantly snap back to the intended background. Next, the awesome stage from Sonic 2, we have Chemical Plant Zone. Here, after winning against Dr. Robotnik and his Mean Bean Machine, if the cameras move below the minigame area, we can see Robotnik's Death Sprite left over and frozen in place. Also, this zone has an unused enemy that can be placed in with debug mode. This badnik skates around on a liquid surface and will stop to fire a nose-like projectile at your character once in a while. Okay, I guess now is a good time to go over some of these other squares that appear throughout the game, but they are only visible while in debug mode. These are actually seen in debug modes as early as in the original Sonic the Hedgehog. As many of you let me know in the last Lost Bits video, the robotic tiles are used to prevent players from exploiting glitches through walls in certain areas by either causing the character to die by touching them or to be pushed out. The other tiles typically seen are ones with Knuckles' face, and these basically are areas that Knuckles can't climb on, preventing his climbing ability from being more overpowered than it already is. There are also tiles with Sonic's shoe, and although I couldn't really figure out what they do, my guess is that they either prevent Sonic from either going too fast, or Sonic has to be going fast enough to pass through them. If you try moving the camera around in this game, you'll quickly realize that although you are given a lot more freedom with this camera, it is still pretty restrictive as it often doesn't let you move past certain areas the developers don't want you seeing. There is however a slight workaround for this, and I guess the developers might have overlooked it. Whenever you place the end signpost in a stage with debug mode, the camera will automatically center on it. So by placing a signpost on the edge of the screen where the camera doesn't let you proceed, the signpost will override the block and the camera will then center on it. This little method lets us see even more things that we aren't supposed to. For starters, at the start of most levels, if you keep moving the camera far back enough, you will reach some sort of alternate parallel universe of the same level that you are currently playing on, but without any obstacles, items, enemies, or even more oddly enough, even any collision detection. Next up in my new favorite 2D Sonic stage, Studioopolis Zone, just like in Springyard Zone from the first game, I couldn't help but abuse the placement of these bumpers. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anything else that isn't normally seen in this zone, so let's move along. When moving the camera in Flying Battery Zone to an area that you haven't yet transitioned to, almost none of the sprites in the new area will load, and instead only you and all the enemies will be walking on nothing. As you can imagine, this can lead to some pretty broken looking environments. It seems that Flying Battery Zone is the only stage that happens to do this. Also, just like in Green Hill Zone, since this area uses more than one background image, you can similarly glitch the background from inside the airship to appear outside as well. I mean, are those clouds inside, or is Dr. Robotnik vaping up a storm these days? In the Press Garden Zone, shortly into the level, there is a large open space where the developers have spelt out the word hello backwards using the print tiles found throughout the level. Seeing as how you can't normally get into this area without debug mode, it is obvious the developers left this in as a little easter egg for those exploring the stage to discover. Another neat thing that I found for this act is that the entire stage seems to loop if moving the camera along the Y axis. But unlike the parallel universes that I mentioned before, it seems that everything gets looped here, including all of the objects that you place in debug mode. As you might already know, I really hate water levels, so thankfully debug mode again lets me skip most of the water parts in Hydro City Zone. One cool unseen thing that I found in this stage is that towards the end of the level, right after you see Dr. R swimming below, his sprite can already be seen hanging out and waiting for you to get into your vehicle. The second act boss fight was also pretty strange. It turns out that you can move outside the boundary and enter another sort of lane, and if you stay in this lane long enough, you will for some reason automatically be teleported inside a wall elsewhere. I'm thinking in order to create the illusion of being a continuous area until you defeat the boss, you get teleported to different segments of the map. But if you break the regular order, you will get teleported into weird places. For some strange reason, Mirage Saloon Zone lets you spawn a lot of the Act 1 bosses. I kind of wish other stages let you do this as well, as it would have led to some pretty weird outcomes. 
Also, towards the end of the first act, if we move the camera over the boss fight, we can see an unused little sandy area at the end of the stage. And even more interestingly, in the sky we can see preloaded sprites of Bark the Polar Bear, Fang the Sniper, and Bean the Dynamite. In the game, one of them is randomly chosen to cause the tornado to crash as a transition into Act 2, so these sprites are likely here just until one of them needs to be called to interact with the player. So I think I just discovered this myself while editing this video. Normally at the start of Act 1 in this zone, the Heavy Magician will knock Knuckles off of the tornado. But since I was playing as Knuckles in an area that you aren't supposed to play as Knuckles, Knuckles can't get bumped off the plane. So instead, for some reason, the word GOT will get bumped off instead. At the start of Lava Reef Zone, if we use the signpost exploit to move the camera back, we can uncover a large, unseen lava pool. And unlike previously mentioned, this isn't another parallel universe, and this lava does still hurt you, and it has collision detection. It is likely that this area might have played a role in the level at some point, but it was eventually decided to be excluded. Towards the end of Lava Reef's Act 2, if we take the camera over the boss fight area, we can find an unused area that appears unfinished with fragmented tiles. This is in fact the same area that was used in the battle between Knuckles and Sonic in the game Sonic and Knuckles. One of the developers has mentioned that the reason this is still here is because when recreating many of these zones for Sonic Mania, they would simply copy the original layouts first and then just edit them after. One of the main gimmicks in the Metallic Madness Zone are these devices that allow you to bounce between the fore and background. While fooling around, I found that if you activate debug mode about halfway between the two destinations, you will be left with a smaller sprite of all the placeable items. Then, after exiting debug mode, your character will also still remain in this smaller size. Unfortunately, although the character might appear smaller, his hitboxes remain the same as if he were normal sized. The only notable thing that I was able to find in the Titanic Monarch Zone is that if you decide to use the signpost exploit at the end boss, you can move on and see Knuckles already in his getaway vehicle, and then you can watch as he gets barbecued. And lastly, in the final area, again by using the signpost exploit, you can move beyond the boss fight and you can see yet another unused area that includes a slope which is never normally seen either. Okay, just as I was about to publish this video, looks like some more cut stuff was found, so allow me to quickly just show it to you as well. Apparently there are several cut Blue Sphere bonus stages that were likely used for testing purposes. I'll quickly just show you their layout on screen. Looks like one of them even had a whopping 780 Blue Spheres. Yeah, uh, no thanks. And with that ends this Lost Bits video on Sonic Mania, and I hope you enjoyed it. This game is awesome, and if you haven't yet tried it out, I seriously can't recommend it enough. Again, if you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave it a like, and if you haven't yet, be sure to check out my Lost Bits on the original Sonic the Hedgehog and other great games over at my channel, or by clicking on the card right here. And if you'd like to stay even more up to date with me and my channel, be sure to follow me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Links to all those will be in the description below. And as always guys, thank you all so much for your continued amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.